So gastric cancer is the third leading cause of cancer death worldwide, and um, it's over 700,000 deaths per year. And uh, Helicobacter pylori, uh, you would think it would be very straightforward. If we know that there's a pathogen that leads to this, why can't we just get rid of it in everyone? So there's a lot of problems with that approach. First of all, there may be some actual benefits of this pathogen because it started out probably as a commensal organism. There's evidence that it goes back hundreds of thousands of years, and there's ideas that it co-evolved with humans, and that it's only when a lot of work that our group has done, not really my lab, but people that I work with, has shown that when there's a disconnect between the human genetics and the bacterial genetics, this mismatch may be one of the factors that leads to cancer, which we're studying. So there may be many people that they don't really need to be eradicated. And in fact, there's evidence that overzealous eradication may have a role in leading to autoimmune disorders, and things like asthma. So we want to understand the whole process of the inflammation and how that leads to cancer. And that's what my lab works on, that's what my talk was about. So, for example, we've identified ways that the bacteria can persist in the stomach by um, altering the ability of the host to kill it because the host makes an agent called nitric oxide, but the bacteria induces various pathways that lead to competition for the substrate for the enzyme that's needed to make the nitric oxide, or various other ways that the enzyme is downregulated through effects on the ability of the RNA to be translated into the protein. We've worked on those things. But the main thing I talked about today was the oxidative stress, which is a type of injury that occurs in a place like the stomach under a caustic situation where there's inflammation. The invading inflammatory cells as well as the lining cells of the stomach, the epithelial cells, can all make oxygen radicals. And these radicals may exist in nature to perhaps fend off tumor cells and, and bacteria and viruses, but when they're made too much and over too much time, this can lead to what we call DNA damage. And some of the work that my group has done is we've demonstrated a unique pathway for the generation of this oxidative damage. And this is through things called polyamines, which are biological molecules which derive from arginine metabolism. And they're regulated in many ways. And one of the ways they're regulated is that there's actually interconversion between the different types of polyamines. And there's an enzyme that we found uh, to be upregulated in H. pylori infection called spermine oxidase. And this enzyme releases hydrogen peroxide. And we've linked this to gastric carcinogenesis. So I showed data today that if you go upstream of the generation of the oxyradicals through polyamines by preventing the synthesis of the polyamines with an inhibitor called alpha ornithine or DFMO, that when we gave this to mice, we got less inflammation of the stomach. And when we used a gerbil model, where w when gerbils are infected with H. pylori, they actually get gastric adenocarcinoma, we were able to get about a 50% reduction in cancer caused by this DFMO. We've also tried to block the spermine oxidase directly. We've had pretty good results with that, not quite as good as the DFMO, but there's currently no spermine oxidase inhibitor that's available for human use. I also touched on uh, work with looking at blocking the phosphorylation of epidermal growth factor receptor. So EGFR signaling is very important in all types of cancers. And We've been studies, doing studies in our animal models showing that a drug called gefitinib, which is in various clinical trials for the treatment of cancer, could have a role in prevention because we were able to, again, reduce the development of cancer in our gerbil model and in some of our, uh, we use a mouse model where they get dysplastic lesions and we could reduce those also.